What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown, this time my Chris Sale graphic. The second Chris Sale graphic actually from my 365 day project. So if you've seen some of my breakdowns before, you're going to recognize some stuff on the side. We've got top effects, background, I've got a text layer, some spark layers, uh, Chris himself, the baseball in it, and then some other additional layers to show the baseball flame himself. Um, so. Let me jump right in and show you how this guy was made. So it started off with this photo here of Fenway. On top of that, I've got the photo of Chris that I cut out of him just standing on the mound. Then on top of that, I have a photo of Boston. Let me disable that. So I've got this photo of Boston here that I actually then masked. So you can see this is what was there. I masked out the river and then sort of masked along the whole sides of the whole skyline just so the skyline was at the bottom then on top of all of this i just threw one big gradient map on top of it of the boston red sox red going to a darker red so if i click on that you can see dark red slightly lighter red and then the boston red sox red on top of that i have the text so if we turn this text on here you can see we've got chris sale and then his post-season stats from 2018. On top of all of this, I have a little bit of a texture layer to add a vignette to it, and that actually adds a little bit of detail on the type itself, which is pretty nice. So next, let's see, let's see what we've got here. So let's, we've got Chris Sale himself. So we have the background of Chris here that I kind of masked out, and actually I, Went ahead and rasterized this to sort of extend the uh, pitching mound here. And then on top of that, I have Chris himself, which right now you can't tell because it's the exact same image just on top of it. So that's why I went ahead and masked out the bottom portion here of just the mound. So it's just him on the mound. And I put the text in actually after I put this on here just to make sure that it would look well or look well, look good. So this is where the text ended up. So on top of this, I went ahead and put a blur um, to act like he's in motion. So I've got two separate layers of pretty much this as a smart object, um, this, this group here. So I went ahead and turned that on. I've got a blur gallery and a puppet warp. So I took the puppet warp and what that allowed me to do, let me see if I can show you this in here. So with the puppet warp, you can go ahead and click different points on the body and move parts of the images. So basically I took his elbow, moved it over, his knee moved it over, and then took his arm and moved it down a little bit to imitate what motion he would actually be making. Um, I went ahead and masked out some of the middle portion so you could still see parts of his body. Um, so that's what this top layer is, and it's set to screen, so it's just um, screening on top of it. So not all these, so none of these dark portions are showing through. So it gives it more of a blurred effect as if he's actually moving. And that's what this other layer is here. It's just more uh, more puppeted and more blurred. And these both have gradient maps on top of them, which is black to the red of the Red Sox and then just a lighter red, AKA pink. So these layers should be pretty much the same. They're both set to screen. If I turn this one on, you can see it comes down a little more. It's blurred a little bit more with a gradient map on top of it. So it just adds a little bit more detail and uh, a little makes the graphic a little more dynamic overall. On top of that, we have this baseball. So what I have here is I've got this baseball, just a baseball I found online. I uh, went ahead into the blur gallery and put a path blur on it, probably from up here, coming down here. Actually, it might be from here to here. Basically, to imitate what spin the baseball would actually have. And as this renders, underneath it is pretty much the same layer, uh, blurred because it's going back towards Chris. And then I have a blur gallery on it as well, and that is also a path blur. But I have that path blur set to a strobe setting of probably three or four. And I have the strobe strength pretty high. Um, what that allows it to do is it basically if you strobe something like a strobe light, you can see multiple little iterations of it. So it basically just shows three steps of it getting progressively smaller. Um, actually what it is, I think I went ahead and copied the baseball a couple times and then grouped them together. 
So this is taking forever to render, so that was a mistake of unblurring that, because it's going to take a while to do that. Uh, but while it's doing that, um, we're just going to sit here and wait, actually. So while we're waiting, go ahead and put in the comments another design breakdown you want me to do for my 365-day project, and I'll see if I can get that posted in the upcoming weeks. Also, if you guys have any suggestions on tutorials, always throw them in the comments. I'm always looking to know what you guys want to learn more of. So now that this is back and rendered, let me turn this on here. So this is what this layer is. It's actually set to opacity of 50. If I set that to 100, you can see the effect of it. So I, I actually made a couple copies of this, made it progressively smaller, and then blurred the path just like this top baseball layer. Now on top of that layer, I have a couple edits to it. So I have levels, which just, just darkens the whole uh, baseball throw. I've got a gradient map. This is a different gradient map. This is um, sort of a fiery one. So it's from this uh, goldenrod color to this red orange to black. So if I turn that on, you can see what it does. It actually doesn't do much. This is set to hue. This is just changing the whole color of everything in it. And this one on top is the same thing, set to soft light at 50%. So you can see what this one does. It adds a lot more effect to it. Now there's other layers down here I haven't touched and I'll, I'm going to touch them in a little bit. So up here we have the actual flame effect on the baseball to show that it's on fire. So I have this spark layer with a hue layer on top of it of red to show that the baseball is on fire but red. And I've got the same one up here with the baseball flame. So the baseball flame is pretty simple. It's this fire. Um, just sort of this fireball image that I went ahead and blurred, just like the baseball, and this is probably gonna take forever again. I have that set to screen, and then I've got two more on top um, with the same blurs or different Gaussian blurs on it. Um, so let me turn this one on. This one is actually set to 30% in screen, so I wanted a little more detail to retain some of the detail from the flames, that's why that one is there. And then this top layer is set to screen as well, and it's just to brighten up the flame image essentially. And then on top of the whole baseball flame image, I have this blue layer set to hue, blue layer, it's clearly blue. This red layer set to hue. And if I turn that on, you can see it turns the whole flame to this sort of pink color to match the rest of the Boston Red Sox red. So I'm actually gonna go back down to a couple of these layers I have on top of Chris. Now I wanna make it so this is actually emitting light. So I've got a couple layers here that if I turn on, you can actually, it doesn't look like they did much on here. Turn them off. Turn them on. Yeah, if you turn them off and turn them on, you can see it paints a little bit of brightness on his face and just changes the color of him a little bit because these are set to color and overlay. So now we've got Chris on here with the text with the fire on top. We can go up here and we've got the top effects. So this is where a lot of the graphics going to change. So I have this uh, sort of lens flare rainbow light leak coming from the side with a gradient map on top of it. It's that same fire gradient map we used before. So we turn that on, you can see it takes away a lot of the rainbow color. On both sides I have these light leak files and you can see this looks terrible. But if we have this, if we have a gradient map set to it, set to luminosity, it's just like using a levels layer. And you can see it's drastically black. I can turn both of these on and it's just a hint from each side now, really just showing the yellows portions of these images. And then on top of those, I have a hue layer set to that same red we've been using. So the colors all flow together and they're all the same. I've got a lens dirt layer on top of it, which adds just a little more depth as if there's dirt on the lens taking the image. And then I've got two color lookups. So I've got an edgy amber one that I have uh, only applied to this portion here to turn this a little more amber uh, to be more fiery. And then on top of that, I've got the color look of 2395, which I've put on a couple of my graphics, which just sort of glues the whole thing together. So that's the graphic itself. So really it's a background created with a couple things that have to do with Boston, Fenway, Chris himself, and the skyline with a gradient map over it. Then I've got Chris himself as a figure as the main figure, text that looks good composition wise next to him. And then the main aspect of this is this fiery baseball, which is blurry because that's realistically what it would be doing. And then a couple little effects on him and then some depth up top. 
Um, so that's pretty much all there was to do with this Chris Sale graphic. So uh, I hope this gave you some insight on how I made this. I hope you learned a little lesson on how to do something in this. I know a lot of people get uh, little hints of how to do something from these, which I don't intend, which is great. Um, I'm always down for people learning new things out of the blue. So if you have any other suggestions for design breakdowns you want to see, let me know in the comments below or let me know on Instagram. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.